I'm believing that there's going to be a harvest of souls, but how many of you realize that it's not all up to God? We've got something we have to do as well. There's a role we have to, to, to play, and uh, it, it could be that we have to say yes to the call of God in our life. Are you ready to say yes? Amen? It may cost us taking a risk that we haven't taken. It may cost us stepping out in faith where we haven't done so before. But I, I believe that a life serving Jesus is the most exciting life that a person can live, right? And so this morning I want to take my voice and I want to put it with the voice of Jesus. And how many of you know that Jesus called Peter out of the boat onto the water, right? And so I want to call the water walker out in each one of you, all right? I'm not preaching to unbelievers today. I'm preaching to believers. Do I have any believers in the house today? I heard about a pastor who was preaching, and the end of his service came, and, and before he dismissed the people, he, he said right after the service at the back, in the back corner, we're going to have a, a meeting of the board and uh, that's how he concluded. And so he went back there, and there was a little group of guys. You know, the board members were back there. And then there was a visitor also who had, had went back there, you know. And the pastor's thinking, well, I wonder what this guy's doing here. And so he politely said to the guy, he said, Sir, maybe you don't, didn't understand me. This is a meeting of the board. And uh, the guy said, yeah, after that service, if there's somebody more bored than I am, I sure do want to meet him. Not a very nice fellow, right? You know, that describes some churches, hopefully not this one, right? Uh, it describes some Christians in their life, they just kind of live a boring Christian life, kind of ho-hum, blasé, kind of just going through the motions. I'm sorry, but Christianity wasn't meant to be that way, amen? When you live by faith, you're going to see things happen. When you step out on faith, there's nothing greater than seeing God do the miraculous. If you read through the Gospels, you'll read about Jesus doing great, mighty, wonderful things. It's not boring at all. It's exciting. You read through the book of Acts, and you read about the apostles and all that they did. It's not boring. Come on. You read about people being set free, chains being broken off of people, earthquakes coming to set people free, incredible things happening, and, and, and so how can anyone read the Word of God and say, well, it used to be exciting back then, but it's just not exciting today. I believe that Christianity is exciting, amen? But if you want to be, live an ex a, a great Christian life, you've got to get out of the boat. All right, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, we're going to jump right in today. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. And he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. In other words, the wind was blowing, all right? And it says, now in the fourth watch of the night. Now, that's somewhere between 3 o'clock in the morning and 6 in the morning. Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, don't be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Come on, how many of you know nothing is impossible with God, right? But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. Tell your neighbor he did not sink. He began to sink, right? Beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And a few minutes later, is that what it's? No, no. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Can you imagine being in that boat? Wow! 
I mean, it, you know, it was a bit of a difficult day and night, to say the least. They were on the sea. A storm was blowing. The waves were crashing. They were weary after a very long day of service and ministry. Now it's between 3 and 6 in the morning. They're fighting a storm, and they look out, and they see this figure walking to them on the water. Now, they know, like you and I know, that, that, that men don't walk on water. And so they thought, oh no, it must be some kind of a ghost. They're afraid, but it turns out to be Jesus. He identifies himself. They recognize him. And of course, they're probably thinking, oh yeah, Jesus, he's the son of God, right? I mean, sure, he can walk on water. I mean, he created the water. He designed the laws of gravity and knows all about the uh, dynamics of density. So if he created those laws, he can bend them a little bit and cause himself to walk on the water. But then Peter... Peter has to jump in, and he says, if that's really you, then command me to get out there and walk. And he says, come on. Now, I'm sure the disciples were watching carefully because they're used to Peter, right? Peter was kind of a boisterous guy, you know. He kind of jumped out there where he shot, shot his mouth off a few times and that kind of a thing. But the amazing thing was Peter didn't hesitate. He put one, one foot outside the boat and the other foot outside the boat and then he let go. And for the first time in human history, an ordinary man was walking on top of the water. Come on. How amazing would that be? It's a remarkable story. And I'll just tell you, it's not just a story. It's something that really happened. How many of you believe it really happened? Amen. Peter experienced God enabling him to do what he could never do on his own to walk on the water. Now, let me tell you that modern day water walkers may not actually walk on water. How many know God could do that if he, if he needed to? Uh, I'm sure somewhere down in all of history that happened to somebody at a moment when God enabled them to do that. But a modern day wa modern walker, uh, water walker, uh, is enabled by God to do what they could never do on their own. But someone said, well, you know, well, Pastor, you know, Peter's faith, you know, he just kind of, he kind of gave out. Well, yeah, he didn't keep his eyes on Jesus. He looked at the wind and the waves. He begins to sink. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a slow sinking, I think. But Jesus was there for them. And someone would say, well, did Peter fail? Well, yeah, you know, at least, you know, he, I think he did. He took his eyes off of Jesus, right? His faith wavered. And, and that's an important aspect of this story. But how many of you realize that Peter wasn't the only failure out there on the sea that day? There were 11 other failures sitting in the boat. Come on. They failed quietly. They failed unobserved. They failed uncriticized. Why? Because they never even had the courage or the faith to get out of the boat. And if Peter was told that he had little faith, what was the size of the faith of those who remained in the boat? Come on. How many of you would have said, I'd like to go and walk on the water as well? And Peter experienced a few of the things that they did not. Only Peter knew the glory of walking on the water. And I'll tell you, when people today take a step of faith, get out of the boat, trust God, and, and God enables them to do what they could not otherwise do, I'm going to tell you something, it marks them. Peter, I believe, was a marked man all the way through the rest of his life. He carried the memory that God had enabled him to walk on the water. And, and so, uh, and another thing, Thing that Peter understood was that even though he began to sink, Jesus was right there. Come on. Jesus was right there with his hand and lifted him up out of the water. And so the fundamental truth in this passage really is that if you want to walk on water, what do you got to do? You got to get out of the boat. Hello? You got to get out of the boat. If you want to experience the power of God in your life, you've got to take a step of faith. If everything you're attempting to, to do can be done in your own power, you need to get out of the boat and on the water where the miracles happen. Like that song says where it talks about where your trust is without borders. Come on. If we learn to discern the calling of God in our lives and we respond with yes and we get out of the boat, we're going to experience the power of God in our life.